five pieces. Yeah, he'll, he'll take it uh, for sure. But that was getting very difficult down the stretch. And Maxime, he really has been uh, impressive since the opening two games. He certainly doesn't look like the worst player but the, between the two. And Magnus is continuously missing opportunities, it feels like, and probably very frustrated that he's not scoring some victories. Right. No, agreed. And again, that's that's another game where it felt like Carlson should be better there, applauding his move order to get a Kings Indian. But something goes wrong or or something goes right for Maxime, as you said. The other way to look at it is MVL, a very, very tricky guy. Um, the variety here continues. Let's bring up the analysis board to say, again, we get a Sicilian. We've seen Carlson play E5. If you're just joining us, we've seen Carlson play the Caro. And again, we've seen the Sicilian a couple times. Um, here we get, ooh, Knight F5. That was not the main line, Sveshnikov. Not something you see every day. This is a variation that uh, is just kind of kind of blitz and rapid more popular. Um, again, the typical approach, everyone on E5 is Knight to B5. And this is a Sveshnikov Sicilian. But not today. With the Queen on D4 now on move 12. Yeah, here it seems like White's pieces are actually pretty perfectly placed. You give me one free move, I'm playing bishop c4, developing my piece, attacking your queen. So black does need to be quick. He plays rook d8, which sacrifices the a7 pawn. But look at Maxime. He doesn't want it because he probably felt his queen was too far away from the rest of the pieces. It would allow black to play bishop b4. So he is preventing his opponent from easy development. And both kings in the center, bishop c4 next for white, castling kingside. I feel like white should be slightly better here. Well, Carlson on the clock, down a little bit on time. I don't know what to make of the opening variety. Like, is that a sign of just Magnus's style? We know he plays a lot, or is it a little bit of a sign of what we've seen today, right? He he hasn't found his groove. He's down in the match. Um, and maybe he's still kind of searching for a system he's happy with, right? What do you take about all the variety we've had? I think Magnus is unhappy, just generally speaking. He's losing in the match, and he's trying to get Maxime out of his comfort zones. And we know what Maxime's comfort zones usually are. He plays the Grunfeld. He plays uh, the Nidorf. He loves the Berlin. <laughs> it seems like when he plays Hikaru Nakamura, it's the Berlin nonstop. So I think that Magnus feels better when it's neutral territory. Right. Yeah, makes sense. So the queen comes to e5. What's funny is you highlighted bishop c4 and castles, but now that it's here, I think you'd be worried to castle because of maybe some kind of knight g4 even, or even bishop d6. But note that queen e5 laughs in the face of the c6 pawn with check. This is interesting. Queen c6, I guess bishop d7 is the move. Right, which hits the queen and the bishop on g5. So there's some tactics that white would have to figure out there. Yeah, there's all kinds of nuttiness there. I mean, there's Bishop takes f6 in some of those positions. I have no idea what's going on, and apparently neither does MVL because he's, he's thinking hard about it. Hmm. So you can start with Bishop takes f6, I guess. And he takes on he the c6, for and now he'll take on f6. With different yeah, this was the line I was trying to figure out. Oh. My head. And then King f1, note everyone, if King takes f2, Queen f4 check would have won the Queen for Carlson. But look at Maxime. He's calculated it to the end, apparently. Although, what's the count right now? It's an extra pawn for white, but the right. bishop pair for black. And if you take on e5, the pawn can just take, and you fix your pawn structure. And here, right. he goes king. Look, he doesn't even castle. He puts his king on f8. I love He's that. He's leaving the, the g8 square for his rook, because that's a long, open line, and that's exactly where rooks like to be. What a what a strange little game this was. And if Carlson can win and strike back, it would be the first time he's converted on a clear advantage in the last several opportunities. So a lot of people looking for the champ to level the score here. Um, Bishop d3. Note the time is about even. And I would say easier position to play for black because look yep. at this bishop on d4. Such a powerful piece. It's hitting the knight on c3 behind it, the pawn on b2, but also giving you some checkmating attacks. And I think the essential question is, do you keep the queens on the board? He does 
not, he allows queen takes e5, but at what point will black say, let me actually move my queen and try yeah. to checkmate that white king on a form? Well, apparently white takes the opportunity, uh, but I, I still think queen g5, because the difference is, even though it's a queen trade, you already highlighted that it undoubles the pawns in such a way that really makes black feel better. Now you, I mean, you can tell how much black's position is better here. Just look at the fact that he's down a pawn, but the computer likes the second player, right? That's how dominant this bishop is. Um, oh, I like that move too. Rook b8. Now, now you're going to lose back some material very quickly. B3 would hang the knight, and if you move the knight, b2 falls. And now b2 and a2 are falling in. Look at that bishop on d4. Look at the a1 yeah. square. The idea is clear. A5, a4, a3, and keep pushing that pawn to the other side. Rook e4, bishop f6. I, I'm expecting, okay, e, or rook g4. You, you'd love trades if you're MBL, so that's a good move. Try to get this bishop off the board to hold. By the way, you got to watch out for some so, discovered checks here. You also have to watch out for 20 seconds in your clock if you're Magnus. Oh, man. 20 seconds to 40. Knight takes h7 is a threat. Oh, my gosh. King... I almost just had a heart attack about F7, by the way. I know you've been talking about full board awareness. I'm still learning, big guy. Man, that was scary. <laughs> the bishop on A2 is doing its job, but what's happening here? H what is happening H now? Takes... Okay, so here's the rook. He wants to mate that king. He wants to mate him with G4. This is wild. And then check and take H7. And then rook G6. Rook G6 here. The bishop on D3 is pinned. Trade off that Oh, rook. it's huge. Huge. Uh-oh. Bishop D5. Why is G4 not just super good? Yeah, he plays it. Magnus does not have a lot of time. He's in big trouble. Rook H5, Rook takes H6. No, but now Bishop takes G6. They're, now you just win the exchange. There's a Bishop on D5. Yeah. You take it. Take it and then Rook D4. Wow. Maxime's taking a second to soak it in, but I think he's going to find the exchange. Well, he doesn't. He do Game on. Okay. But Still now good it's only for an extra MBL. pawn instead of an extra exchange. Yeah. No, oh, Dan, that's a big miss. And look, it's an H pawn. Nope, but he misses Rook G5 check wins the bishop. Oh! And, oh, and Magnus jumps Whoa. back. And I'm not going to, I do read lips well. I'm not going to repeat that because there are children watching. 